All right, everybody, so here are some answers. I'll go through it with you. And if you look at number one, it says evidence suggests that bacteria supplied with a cup of sugar could run a 60 watt light bulb for 17 hours. Which of these was most likely used to affirm this scientific idea? So first thing is I see this word affirm and I think affirm means to really support or to say that the scientific idea that what was set up here was correct. So I'm going to look at one of these things. What's really going to make my scientific idea? What's going to really prove it? Um, formulate a hypothesis. So my hypothesis is my educated guess. When you guess something, you're not really proving anything. So that's one thing I don't think it is. Identifying the problem. Is identifying the problem in an experiment or saying, you know, what your scientific question is, is that really going to help you um, prove what's, that, what's, what's up there? Probably not. That's another one that I didn't uh, select. Conduct an experiment. Well, why do we conduct experiments? To prove to us what the answer to the question is. So if I think about it, this sounds like a good answer, so I'm going to look at this for a second, and then write a conclusion. Yeah, writing a conclusion is good, so your conclusion is important to really saying whether your idea was correct, but you can't write a conclusion without actually testing it. So the most important part is actually experimenting. Your experiment is what actually proves that your idea is correct or not. Number two. This is a lot of reading, so first I see that there's a table, I go straight to the table before I read. And I see here, I know my table, I'm looking at days, and so I have average height in centimeters, and it says plant growth, so I'm looking at plants and they're growing um, every day, and I'm looking at their height, okay, that's fine. And I see in container A, container A only gets water, okay, container B, water plus fertilizer. So I see there, there's a big difference. There's water here, but there's fertilizer in that one. So there's my change. I know that that could be some variable there. That's the variable that the scientist is changing. One plant gets water, the other one gets fertilizer. So let me see the question and see if I can just dodge all these, all these words up here. Which of these is being tested in this experiment? Let's see if I can rule some things out. A, the effect of water on plant height. Mm, I don't know, I see water on both of them, so maybe, why not? Um, B, the effect of fertilizer on plant height. Huh. I see fertilizer there, so that could be one of them. The maximum height the plants will grow. This has to do with heights. Okay. And then the number of days the plants will grow. Um, I think I might have to read a little bit. Yep, they're really trying to trick me here. So if I look up, a group of students conducted an experiment to study the growth of bean plants. An equal number of bean plants of similar size were planted in containers A and B. So I have bean plants, okay, in two containers, great. Each day for five days, container A received water only. Okay, I see that. And then while container B received an equal amount of weak fertilizer solution, I see that as well. The table below shows the average height of plants in each container for each day of the experiment. Okay, so if I think about this for a second, the major change that was done here was the fertilizer. Okay, so one guy got fertilizer, the other guy didn't. So I know the fertilizers, that I'm trying to see, does the fertilizer make an effect? So this is my cause, does that make my plant grow higher? So I see that it really has a lot to do with the fertilizer. So if I look at my questions, I see that, yeah, height's important, but what am I really trying to test? I'm trying to test the effect of fertilizer. Okay, so it's not really the water. Both get water, so it's not really gonna tell me much. So I know it's B. Number three, a scientist hypothesizes that homing pigeons use their sense of smell to find their way home. She tests this idea on two groups of pigeons. She releases the pigeons in group one, I see it here, and records the direction of their flight. Okay, I see the birds. Pigeon two are given this uh, substance that blocks their sense of smell for a short period of time. Okay, so no smell in this one. Okay. Um, let's see, so she blocks their sense of smell in the, sequ the second one. The scientist then releases them and records the direction of flight. Okay, I see the birds. Her data are shown in the diagram below. From these results, what can be concluded about the scientist's hypothesis? So I'm going to look at the hypothesis again. Where's the hypothesis? Here. That homing pigeons use their sense of smell to find their way home. I want to see if that's correct. Okay. My data is telling me that this one their sense of, cell is not, sense of smell is not blocked, and then they go home. So almost all of them go home. But in this one, 
their sense of smell is blocked and it looks like only one of them is going home. So she says the pigeons use their sense of smell to, f smell to find their way home. She looks like she's pretty right because it looks here, they have their sense of smell and they're going home, but these don't have their sense of smell and they're not going home. So it seems like her hypothesis is right. So is it supported by the data? Yeah, her data are basically saying that she's right. Okay, so she doesn't have to modify or test it again. It is supported by the data, so this can't be right either. And it can be applied to all bird species. Uh, it doesn't say much about that. They're just trying to trick you there. So that can't be right either. Your correct answer here is A. Okay, sorry for circling that. Next, four. Use the information in graph below to answer the following items. So first I'm gonna look at my graph. Volume of exhaled air liters per minute. Okay, so volume, I know that's amount basically, the amount of air, and then level of physical activity. So the exhale is basically how much you're exhaling, and then the level of physical activity. So when you're sitting, you're exhaling less, I see that. Okay, you're walking, you're ex exhaling more, you're running, that makes sense. Yeah, when I run, I exhale more. So the measurement of exhaled hair, air. All right, let's look at the question before I go up here. According to the data, as physical activity increases, and that means that I'm becoming more physical, so I'm, you know, either walking or running, so more physical activity. The amount of carbon dioxide produced, what does it do? Okay, so I know carbon dioxide is in my, when I exhale, so if I'm walking more, running more, there's more exhale, there's more carbon dioxide when I run more. So when there's more physical activity, there's more carbon dioxide that's produced. So the amount of carbon dioxide produced increases. Yep, that makes sense to me. This did not go down, right? Okay, and it didn't remain constant. It wasn't the same, so it couldn't be those. Gr decreases, then increases. Nope, you're lying to me. This is all going up. Okay, 